following action of the 2015 Sassol Rally is brought to you by Motorsport South Africa and its partners Toyota, Ford, Volkswagen, Dunlop and of course Sassol. There are eight rounds in the South African National Rally Championship, but amongst these, it is undoubtedly the Sassel Rally which stands out as the crown jewel. South Africa's premier rally event again took place in the areas around Nelspruit, Sabi and Kraskop on the weekend of the 17th and the 18th of April. As has become familiar over the years, this 24th running of the event included a number of spectacular tarmac stages, such as the Sabi Town Square stage, White River School stage and the signature Nelspruit Town stage affectionately known as Spaghetti Junction. But as much as these tarmac stages have become part of the Sassel Rally, so has the wet weather that often marks this event and 2015 was no different. The weekend started cold and wet and while the rain eased slightly on Saturday, the crews competing in round two of the championship had to pit themselves not only against each other, but also against extremely slippery conditions in the York Timbers plantations. To make matters even more challenging, the stages weren't consistently slippery, offering grip in some sections and understeer inducing mud in others. But then this is rallying, a sport known for its curveballs, where nothing can be taken for granted. Welcome to the low felt of Mpumalanga, backdrop of the 2015 Sassel Rally and scene of a dramatic event that unfolded amidst the rain and the mist. For the crews in South Africa's top rally class, S2000, the conditions may have been ever so slightly less challenging. With the benefit of four-wheel drive, together with powerful two-liter engines, these men and women had more tools at their disposal than their brethren in class S1600. But even so, it was anything but easy. Never mind what you drove on this year's Sassol. The defending champions in class S2000 are Leroy Poulter and navigator Alvin Kutsia, champion the Castrol Team Toyota Yaris S2000. They won the 2014 championship with one round to spare, but came up against resistance from former champions Mark Cornier and Robin Houghton in their Ford Performance Fiesta S2000 when they won round one in Durban earlier this year. So, even before the flag dropped in Sabi, it was clear that this rally was to be another duel between Poulter and Cronier, as it was on round one. But Cronier had the upper hand from the get-go and led the event from start to finish. Poulter managed to restrict Cronier's lead to 29 and a half seconds overnight, but on day two, Cronier not only pulled further away, but Poulter ran into side shaft trouble with three stages to go. This made it easy for Cronier, while behind Polter, battle raged for third overall. Initially, it seemed as if Sassol Volkswagen's Henk Lazachan would peg third, but then an unfortunate racing accident on stage eight took both Lazachan and the NAD Ford crew of Yapi van Nikark and Gordon Noble out of the running, allowing Castrol Team Toyota's Genil de Villiers to move up into third place. He maintained this position throughout the day but sadly, the engine in his Toyota Yaris let go just 25 kilometers from the end of the event, which meant that Sassol Volkswagen's Gugu Zulu, with navigator Pierre Aris beside him, achieved his first podium finish in Class S2000. With a spoil split between Ford, Toyota and Volkswagen, it's somewhat ironic that not everyone was happy as the mud settled after the Sassol rally. But then again, this is rallying. And it isn't for sissies. But that was how things played out in Class S2000. One step down from the four-wheel drive machines in the class are the men and women who campaign in Class S1600, South Africa's premier rally class for front-wheel drive machines with engines of 1600cc. This is a highly competitive class of racing, with a plethora of fast crews competing for the spoils. Last year, it was Guy Bottrell and Simon Vasey Lyle who walked the championship in their locally built Yato Toyota Etios, but so far this year, they've found the going tough, 
managing only a third place on round one. That event was won by Paul Franken and Henry Kern in their Manitou supported Volkswagen Polo with Fragram supported Matthew Vasey Lyle and Skulk van Heerden coming home second. So it was evident right from the start that Bottrell would have to fight back on the Sassol, but would he be able to do that? especially in these testing conditions. We're here at the Sassel, uh, the conditions of a testing. Um, I'm quite sure the race is going to be won by the guy that gets the least amount of hassles, punctures and broken cars. So we're just going to maybe play it a bit easy and just see where day two positions us. But the young Durbanite was not to have it all his own way. And the winner of round one, Paul Franken, had shown that he was able to achieve the top step of the podium. But would he be able to make it two wins from two starts? We had a good start to the season, so we're in the lead of the championship at this moment. Uh, Sassel was a difficult event, but we know have to, what we have to do, and yeah, hopefully we can stay strong. Besides the defending champion and the most recent winner, Class S1600 also sports a number of other very fast and capable crews. Chad van Buurden in the Gemsport Volkswagen Polo is certainly capable of winning rallies. While Ashley Haig Smith in the AHS Ford Fiesta R2 has proven himself as one of the fastest drivers in the lineup. Another exceptional talent is that of Richard Leake, who pilots the ATS Ford Fiesta. While Matthew Basie Lyle in the Fragrum Toyota Etios showed his mettle by coming second on round one. But all of that is in the past, all theoretical at best. And this is the Sassel Rally, a mad dash through the plantations of York Timbers and MTO, made even tougher by extremely challenging conditions. In stage one was a firm test for the crews, as they had to brave the 14 and a half kilometer stage known as Olifans Geramte, just outside the town of Sabi. With the pressure fully on, it came as no surprise that the fastest crew through the tricky stage was last year's champions, Guy Bottrell and Simon Basie Lyle, in the Yato Toyota Etios. The time of 11.47.1 was two and a half seconds quicker than the time posted by Chad van Buurden and Nico Swartz in the Gemsport Volkswagen Polo. So not quite the cracking start Bottrell had become accustomed to, but certainly better than lagging by the same margin. Next quickest was youngster AC Portgieter with Tommy de Troy beside him in their Volkswagen Polo with Matthew Vasilein and Skulk van Heerden in the Fragram Toyota Etios posting the fourth quickest time. Richard Leek and Rikus Furi came through next fastest in their ATS supported Ford Fiesta while Polis Franken and Henry Kern in the Manitou VW Polo posted a time some 55 seconds slower than the early leaders. Championship hopeful Ashley Haig Smith and navigator Damien van Us an early victim of the Sassol rally as the AHS Ford Fiesta's engine let go just a short distance into the stage. For the surviving crews, it was onwards with the event, starting with a quick stop at the Dunlop service park, just to sort out the early niggles and nerves. This was followed by the first running of the stage known as Grootfontein, a 29.2 kilometer long gravel plantation section, which at this point served as stage two of the rally. For Guy Bottrell, it was a great opportunity to extend his slender lead, but fate intervened and dealt the defending champion a bum hand. A mechanical failure of a side shaft on the open section between the service park and the start of stage two took him completely out of the running and dealing the hope of the second consecutive championship a crushing blow. Yes, uh, unfortunately going to stage two in the open section, uh, we had something fail in the gearbox. We think it's a diff, but we're not quite sure, but uh, it's put us out of day one. We're going to try and get it fixed for Super Rally tomorrow, but uh, we're not quite sure what's wrong at the moment. This opened the door for second place Chad van Buurden to turn up the wick, which is exactly what he did by posting the quickest time on stage two. He was followed 50 seconds later by Marco Himmel and Francia Skunbi in their Volkswagen Polo. AC Portgieter was another 30 seconds back, with Richard Leek following five seconds behind him. They were followed by Matthew Basie Lyle, Paul Franken, and Andrew Hayne. Stage three came next, a 24.2 kilometer long stage known as Driko, which promised another mad dash through a muddy York Timbers plantation. Having taken over the lead after the demise of Bartrell, all attention turned to Van Buurden and Swartz in their Gemsport VW Polo. Their time on stage three was 21.33.3. 
just shy of a minute slower than the time posted by Franken and Kern in the Manitou Polo. Van Buren had a massive spin, which took time to recover, allowing Franken to make up for time lost on the first two stages. AC Portgieter posted yet another good stage time and moved up into second place as a result. He pipped Matthew Basie Lyle by 17 seconds, but then the latter had two spins and lost nearly a minute recovering from those. The rest of the Class S 1600 field were either limping through the mud or spectating from the sidelines. So, after the first three muddy and misty stages, it was the name of Chad van Buren that topped the standings. He had a lead of 116 over Portgieter, who in turn had Franken just 10 seconds behind him. Basie Lyle followed next, with him already more than five minutes behind after a torrid start. After another visit to the Dunlop Service Park, it was time to tackle the same two stages from the morning again. This time, York Timbers Grootfontein served as stage four of the rally. But if anything, the conditions had worsened during the day. By now, it had become clear that Franken was determined to catch Van Buren. And on stage four, that's exactly what he set out to do. The young Cape Townian's time was 26 minutes 42.2, some 5.2 seconds quicker than the time posted by Van Buren. Fast as sure, but not enough to make any real inroads in Van Buren's lead. AC Portgieter showed his tenacity by again posting a great stage time, this time the third quickest of the stage, but not quite enough to hold on to second place overall. Matthew Vasey Lyle posted the fourth fastest time, with Richard Leake in the ATS Fiesta featuring as the last real runner in the field, though his time was more than a minute down of that of the stage winner. The field moved on to stage five next, which was an exact repeat of York Timbers, Drikop 24.2 kilometer of twisty gravel, the healthy serving of mud and mist thrown into the mix. Van Buren was still comfortably in the lead of the rally, but even so, he posted a blistering time on stage five. He went a full 50 seconds faster than the next quickest man, which in this case turned out to be none other than Richard Leake in the ATS Fiesta. Paul Franken followed some eight seconds behind Leek, with Matthew Basie Lyle in another 13 seconds back. Young AC Portgieter had lost more than one and a half minute on the stage after running wide in a hairpin and getting stuck, though he still managed to retain third place overall. With stage five done and dusted, though there wasn't much of that in the air, the day's gravel stages came to an end. With just two short tarmac stages to follow, it was still the name of Chad van Buren at the top of the leaderboard. Paul Franken had moved up into second place, though Van Buren's lead had grown to over two minutes. AC Portgieter was now in third with a healthy gap to Basie Lau, who had fourth place. Himmel rounded out the top five. With the day's stages behind them, it was time for the crews to return to the Dunlop Service Park in Sabi before heading out for two consecutive tarmac stages. The famous Sabi Town stage came next, but at 0.9 kilometers in length, it didn't offer much opportunity for crews to make up time. Stage 7, which came after, featured an identical length, but was run in the nearby town of White River. Paul Franken won stage 6, with Vasey Lyle and Leek breathing up his tailpipes. The winning margin was 0.1 of a second. Stage 7 was won by Vasey Lyle, with Leek and Van Buren posting the second and third quickest times, but again, the margins were negligible. And so the positions and gaps remained largely the same, and by the time the tired crews finally shut off their rally machines for the day, Van Buren and Swartz led Franken and Kern by 2 minutes 13 seconds. Vasey Lyle and Van Buren were 3 minutes 46 off the lead, with Portgieter and Detroit 2 minutes behind. Leek and Faree moved up into the top five, although they were more than 25 minutes behind the leader at this point. Stage eight was the first stage of day two and consisted of the signature Spaghetti Junction stage in downtown Nelspreit. The stage was canceled, however, after the collision between Henk Lauterfan in the Sassel Volkswagen and Jakob van Nikat in the NAD Ford. So onto stage nine they went, a one and a half kilometer long tarmac stage at the Mbombela Stadium near Nelspreit. As with the other tarmac stages on the event, the Bombela stage offered little in terms of changes, and while Richard Leake won the stage in his ATS Ford, 
His time was just 0.8 of a second faster than that of Chad van Bierden. Guy Bottrell, now competing under Super Rally regulations, posted the next fastest time, followed by Basie Lyle, Franken and Portpita. By now, the Nelspreet Super Special had been cleared of wreckage and the crews made the way back to Spaghetti Junction for stage 10 of the Sassol Valley. At 1.4 kilometres in length, the Nelspreet Super may not be very long, but it is certainly a great spectacle for the crowd, who again turned out in numbers despite the damp start to the day. For Guy Bottrell, stage 10 was a chance to show what he's capable of if things go right. And that's exactly what he did by going 0.6 seconds quicker than AC Potgieter, who was the second fastest man on the stage. Andrew Hayne followed some two seconds slower, with Franken another second behind. Leek all but matched Franken's time, with Van Bierden taking a more cautious approach despite his tonic experience as a former track racer. With the morning's tarmac stages now done, the crews were given a moment in the Dunlop service park to compose themselves and their machines before heading off into the forests once more. First of the day's gravel stages was Spring Farm, an 11.1 kilometer long charge through one of MTO's plantations. By now, it was clear that young Richard Leake with navigator Rikus Furi beside him was hitting his stride. But he couldn't quite match the time set by Guy Bottrell, who was super rallying on day two. He posted a time of 8 minutes 52.6, three seconds faster than AC Potkieter, but more importantly, nearly nine seconds up on Franken. The young Ford driver was making progress, though it would take more than that to move from fifth to fourth overall. Van Buren ran into difficulties on this stage, losing time in the process but managing to nurse his gem sport Volkswagen through nonetheless. But for Van Buren, there was more worry to follow. Stage 12 came next without the benefit of service and was 26.7 kilometers in length. This meant a long way to hold things together, but in the end he managed to get through unscathed, although he lost more time in the process. AC Pothit had again went fastest of the regular runners on the stage, with Leek just 11 seconds behind him. Marco Himmel posted the third fastest time, with Andrew Hain in the Hain Sport Volkswagen next quickest. Van Buren, Vasi Lyle, and Franken completed the lineup. With 12 of the Sassel Rally's 15 stages completed, it was still Van Buren who had the lead, with Franken and Vasi Lyle behind him. Portgitter and Leek completed the top five. The crews were afforded a quick visit to the Dunlop service park before tackling the last loop of stages. We caught up with rally leader Van Buren before he set off on stage 13. Two more stages, yeah. We've um, fixed the brakes and um, we've strengthened the gear lever. So, you know, we've got two minutes uh, lead. Um, we're just going to try and conserve that. Stage 13, known as Spitzkopf to Hendriksdal, came next. At 13.4 kilometers in length, it may not have been the longest stage on this year's rally, but it was certainly one of York Timber's most spectacular plantations. Guy Bottrell again went fastest of all, but it was Marku Himmel who posted the quickest time among the regular runners. He was followed through by AC Pothieter in a similar machine, with Richard Leek just three seconds slower in the ATS Ford Fiesta. Andrew Hain also put in another good stage time in the Hain Sport Polo, with Matthew Basie Lyle in the program Toyota Etios following a single second later, despite some gearbox problems. The two leaders, Van Bierden and Franken, both clearly decided to tap off just a bit, as their positions were all but decided anyway. With stage 13 done, the action moved to the second running of Hendriksdal to Mags Lee. All that stood between Van Bierden and a win was the 26.7 kilometers of gravel that made up stage 14 and a quick romp around the showgrounds in Nelsprite. The would-be winner posted a time of 20 minutes 59 on the stage, nearly 48 seconds slower than the time posted by AC Portgieter, but then it hardly mattered at this point. Richard Leek posted another quick time, pipping Marku Himmel by 8 seconds in the process. Andrew Hain and Paul Franken also managed to post competitive times, with Basie Lyle losing nearly a minute to Portgieter with more gearbox issues, yet managing to retain his third place overall. 
The final stage of the 2015 Sassel Rally was again the short, sharp showground stage in Nelspreit. But at only 600 meters in length, it was a mere formality. And with that formality taken care of, it was Chad von Bierden who took a much-deserved victory. He was followed home by the winner of the previous round, Paul Franken, with Matthew Vasey Lau, who came second last time out, taking third on the Sassol. AC Porthitter and Richard Lee completed the top five. But for Chad van Bierden, the champagne must have tasted extra sweet after spraying it from the top step of the podium. Winning the Sassel is never easy. Doing so in conditions as tough as those experienced this year, however, even tougher. We are really happy. Hard, hard event just to finish and to do it on the top of the podium. Um, yeah, we're very happy. Paul Franken made it two podiums from two races, though he had to sacrifice the top step this time round. Still, his second place on the Sassel means he retains his lead in the Class S1600 Championship. Uh, Sassel Rally was a difficult one. We put a lot of challenges forward, but we managed to stay out of trouble and uh, we're happy with our result second. Uh, we're still leading the championship, so just continue getting results like it. For the men and women who compete in this class, the next round of the championship is the Secunda Motor Rally, which takes place on the 15th and 16th of May. But since the Sassol Rally was a round of the FIA's Africa Championship, there was another group of cars in the mix. This meant that fans again entertained by the turbo-popping sounds of a few Subaru Impressas and Mitsubishi Lancers, cars that we seldom see rallying in South Africa these days. The crews that take part in the Africa Championship, however, aren't used to rallying in conditions like those encountered on this year's Sassol, and as a result, they started with caution. Fastest of these drivers on the opening stage was Jesse Singh and the Dirt Star Racing Team Subaru Impreza. With Jasper Chatty in the Team Kibos Mitsubishi Ibu just two seconds behind him. Muna Singh in the second Dirt Star Racing Subaru was nearly one minute off the pace at this point. Interestingly, their stage times were on average 30 seconds slower than those posted by our own Class S1600 crews despite the local lads having only front-wheel drive and significantly less power. On stage two, it was Chatty who pipped Jassy Singh by the smallest of margins, with Muna Singh losing more time to the two front runners. And this was the pattern for most of the event. Chatty going just ever so slightly faster than Jassy Singh, with Muna Singh lagging behind them. The drivers from the Africa Championship clearly relished the tarmac, as all three of them posted time similar to our own Class S2000 cars on the Sabi Town stage, as well as in White River. By the end of day one, it was Jaspreet Chatty and navigator Craig Thorley, who held a healthy lead of two minutes over Jassy Singh and his navigator Sahid Khan, with Muna Singh and Adrian Sutherland 11 minutes behind. Day two saw the three Africa Championship crews back in action in the forests of Mpumalanga. And with the weather having cleared somewhat, they were upping their pace considerably. The two Sings got day two underway in fine style, with Jassy beating Muna comprehensively on the opening stage of the day. While Chatty lost 15 seconds to the fastest of the two Impressas on this stage. This didn't seem to bother Chatty too much though, as he took 12 seconds back on the very next stage, with Muna Singh losing nearly 40 seconds to his two fellow competitors. By the time the last two gravel stages started, it was clear that Chatty wasn't going to be caught on this event. Jassy Singh lost some time on stage 13 and 14, and then it was onwards to the final stage at the showgrounds in Nelspreit. For Jesse Singh, this was the last hurrah, as he won the stage by 0.4 seconds over Chatty, with Muna Singh completing the 0.6 kilometer long stage two seconds slower. In the end, it was Jaspreet Chatty and navigator Craig Thorley who won the African Championship round in their team Kibos Mitsubishi Evo X. 
They were followed home by Jazzy Singh and navigator Saeed Khan in their Dirt Star Racing Team Subaru Impreza, with Muna Singh and Adrian Sutherland of the same team taking third place. For these crews, the Sassel Rally offered a sterner than usual test, but to those who completed the event, it was certainly an achievement to cherish. Sassel brought you all the action from the 2015 Sassel Rally, together with Motorsport South Africa and its partners, Toyota, Ford, Volkswagen.